6.45 a.m., 15th of June, and it's dark. I have a partner who is warm. He gets up and puts on jogging clothes. I don't, it's still dark. I'm reluctant to jog around the park or down to the Merry Creek by myself, and I don't like the way he slows down to wait for me under the bridge. It feels like I'm being minded. I do some stretching on the bedroom floor until I realise I'm not stretching, I'm just lying there thinking of Eurydice Dixon. It's Friday. She was walking home three nights ago through another park near where I used to live. I didn't know her in life, but in death, she's all I can think about. When Tom gets home, I remember to tell him about the man who grabbed me in the city a few weeks back, completely crowded mall. He just reached out. I'd been on the phone to Tom, who was overseas. We'd just finished talking. I guess I was distracted. Some guy took his chance. Tom is shocked. What did you do? Nothing. I just shrugged him off. There was another man who was going to step in to help, I think. Then my tram was coming, so... It's an everyday story. A nothing story. Nothing happened. But a young woman with friends and a family and a life was followed through the city, raped and murdered by a teenager called James Todd. Days earlier, Sydney woman Chi Yu disappeared and her flatmate was arrested for her alleged murder. In the wake of these killings, my half-forgotten everyday stories, my nothing stories, keep rising to the surface. 8.15 a.m. Women say it's such a relief to hit 40 because the attention wears off and you're just ignored. It's only partly true. The street attention slows, but it doesn't stop. I'm a white, cis, overeducated woman living in an inner city suburb with a man and I don't face the racism, homophobia, the other daily horrors that some friends do. Still, I'm wearing the wrong clothes today. It's cold and I've put on an old woolen dress. It's short, rides up my stockings when I cycle. I hop off my bike at the lights to try to delay the fabric's creep. The tram driver also paused, stares. 3.45 p.m. I was 15, in my school uniform, trying to call a friend in a phone booth with a bunch of coins. It was late afternoon, blisteringly hot. A group of men had come out of the pub nearby, a big group. They seemed old to me, they were probably in their 30s. One entered the phone booth and just pressed himself against me. Then from the other side, another man. The others crowded around, pushing against the glass of the phone booth. They were quiet, weirdly quiet, just pressing. Then they left. They didn't say a word. 6 p.m. Sometimes I leave work a bit late to go up to the big supermarket on the bike path that curls off Princess Park and threads off into Brunswick. It's dark already, whole sections unlit. I go on the side streets instead and it takes me 10 more minutes. I often take the longer route to go anywhere anyway. 10 more minutes each way, Monday to Friday, 100 minutes a week. As I cycle, I think of another story. There's always another story. 2 or 3 a.m. at a wedding in the middle of nowhere. I was the only sober one, nursing a tea on the couch, laughing at the 50 or so dancers stumbling around in their finery. The tall, intense dude who'd been bugging me all night was at it again. Tom and I had been swatting him away. He was at least 10 years younger. His fiance was there. He seemed more mosquito-like irritating than serious. But by 2 a.m. he was shit-faced. Tom left to go to the toilet and the dude was there in an instant, playfully dancing above me as I sat on the couch. I told him to get lost. He frowned and grabbed a cushion and pushed it into my face, over my eyes and nose and mouth. I tried to move the cushion. Couldn't try it again. This young, strong dude whose actions seemed effortless made me realise that it was nothing for him to smother me. 
it would take everything for me to make him stop. He got bored, removed the cushion, danced away. 7 p.m. I cycle to my friend Mark's house for drinks, go the back way to avoid traffic and get lost. Bloody Brunswick. Weird streets that don't say no through road but lead to dark alleys. I could keep going and get there sooner or I could backtrack. It's freezing. I push forward into the blackness, bumping on the cobblestones, feeling stupid and terrified and defiant and also very tired. None of this is new. 9.30 p.m. Did I tell you about when I was 11 and it was World Day at school? We all got assigned countries. Mine was Liechtenstein. My grade six teacher saw me dressed in my Liechtensteinian skirt, apron, plaits, and he said, I wish you were 18 right now. Kate bursts into mortified laughter. We're outside her house after the birthday drinks, under a street light, talking about Eurydice Dixon and Chi Yu. We hadn't yet heard about Gail Winner and 16-year-old Larissa Bilby, two other women who will be murdered in June. All of those years of drunk cycling alone through Carlton and Fitzroy, we say to each other, falling off bikes in empty dark streets, all those weirdo flatmates, weren't we lucky? And what about that time when I finally forked out for a taxi and that cab driver felt me up? I was lucky not to have been molested as a child like so many friends, or to be part of the one woman who dies every week in domestic violence statistic. Author Jane Gilmore wrote in 2017 that the most dangerous place in Australia for a woman to be is at home with her partner on a Saturday night. The Red Heart Campaign and Destroy the Joints say that by 1st of December 2018, 212 people, including children, will have been killed by murder or manslaughter in Australia this year. Approximately 78% of the known perpetrators will be men. Kate and I don't even talk about the teenage years, safe at home with the boyfriends. Was it rape? And did he mean to hit me? Or was it all a mistake, a misunderstanding? 11 p.m. You know, any time you want to walk through the dark by yourself, I'll go with you, Tom says. We both laugh bleakly. But what if we had a fight sometime and I wanted to go out and cool off? What if I wasn't in a good relationship but a bad one? Could I leave and have a good cry by myself in the darkness by the Merry Creek? No. Not good to be upset or distracted out there or wearing the wrong clothes or to be a teenager or young or not even that young. Despite the statistics, I stay at home. These tragic events start it all up again, but it doesn't end. Visit wheelercentre.com for the best in books, writing and ideas from Melbourne, Australia and the world.